this is a John Deere uh, T560 uh, combine harvester uh, and it's, it's also called a hill master as well where, where the combine is self-leveling to go across hills and slopes. This is sitting around about in the middle of the range uh, of, of combines that we offer. We offer some smaller combines that, um, that don't have the same separation system as this has got. Uh, and then we also offer some much larger combines for, for large scale arable farmers um, that, that are called rotary combines. Uh, and they have, they have uh, a very large output and can, can harvest over 100 acres a day. The combine itself would be around about three and a half metres wide and the grain tank size would hold about eight tonnes of wheat or any other crop that you decide to harvest. And then the combine empty would probably weigh close to 10 tonnes, so probably be looking nearly, nearly 20 tonnes full, which it's a, it's a fair weight going across the field. Um, the, header on, the header on this combine is a, is a 22 foot cut, um, so we're taking uh, just, over, uh, just over six metres at a time. And the, and the fuel tank is roughly around about eight to 900 litres, so hopefully it's enough for, for a good working day. This is a John Deere uh, Powertech engine uh, and it's a 6.8 litre um, uh, turbocharged diesel engine uh, which is 6,800 cc and the, the combine only uses diesel, um, diesel fuel only uh, and it, it produces around about 350 horsepower. It has a top speed of 20 miles an hour for going down the road. This transmission that we've got on the, uh, on the combine, it allows a fuel saving mode to drop the engine revs right down uh, so that it's, uh, it's again saving the farmer uh, money when he's transporting the combine along the road. The, the machine itself, the concept of the internal workings of the machine is probably around about 10 years old now. Um, but a couple of years ago they've, they updated the cab. Um, but the main differences uh, with the combine would be software on the main computers and also the screen uh, where all the controls and the settings are made uh, from the operator. First thing I do is I, I, go, I, I go and open the uh, back steps up on the combine. Uh, I then go up to the engine bay. Then I, I check my hydraulic oil levels to make sure I've got enough oil to run all the hydraulic pumps and the header controls. Uh, after then I would then go to my engine air filter. Uh, and I clean, I clean the, uh, the air filter out to make sure there's no dust and debris and, and that the engine can get as much air into it as possible um, for, for, the, for the horsepower requirement. Then I'm, I'm pretty much ready to, to go combining. Get into the cab, uh, I'd, have a, I'd have a check of the windows and just see if, if my vision is, is, is fine. And if not, I, could, I would spend about five or 10 minutes just cleaning the windows because they do get very dusty every day. And just do it, and also do a, a visual walk around, just to make sure that um, the combine looks fine, and there's nothing, there's no, there's no p uh, pieces of uh, metal hanging off of it, or, or anything that's been broken. I would start the combine up first, uh, and then depending on the crop that I'm going into, uh, for instance, this field of winter wheat, I can I can change the settings from the from the driver's seat in the cab. Um, and I can I can say if I if I'm going on another demonstration I could I could switch it to oil seed rape for instance from from the seat of the cab without actually having to get out uh, and change anything myself it's all electronically controlled from the from the from the buttons in the cab. You could combine a, a vast number of crops uh, anything from European crops such as uh, such as winter wheat and barley. Uh, and oilseed rape uh, through to legumes such as uh, beans for human consumption uh, and then also onto soya beans for, for chicken feed as well. There's a, there's a very long list of crops uh, that, that you can harvest that, and, and that have settings in the cab for the combine. The, you, there's, a, there's a main settings page on the screen 
uh, and you can you go into the main settings and there's a, there's a long list of, uh, of all the combine crops that you can choose from. Select the appropriate crop for, for the crop you have in front of you uh, and then that installs some factory settings for the, for the combine. Um, uh, so it'll, it will change um, the, all the separation systems uh, for clearances uh, and also sieve settings because some seeds are smaller than others and it will either close sieves to make it smaller to let the seeds through or make it bigger to allow the bigger seeds to come through. So when, I'm, when I'm happy with the combine uh, and I've, I've put in the right crop I would then uh, start combining and after a few metres I would create a theoretical line across the field, what we call an A and B line. Uh, and that is where a point where I mark uh, a theoretical flag on the screen. Uh, I then drive uh, 15 metres. Uh, it then sets a B point, which creates another theoretical flag in the field. And after that, it creates a theoretical line all the way around the globe for as long as possible. So the in theory, I could uh, combine in a, in a straight line across the world if there was a crop in front of me. It helps the efficiency of the combine because it maintains a full header width uh, across the field. It, it reduces a lot of overlap um, in the field. Uh, an overlap is where we're using the header wider than the crop, so we're not taking a full header width. That's what contributes to more fuel use uh, because you're obviously taking a longer time to cut a shorter width of crop um, so it just helps to keep a full width and you can also finish the fields a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently um, and it also saves a lot of operator fatigue as well across the day because some operators are working 12 to 16 hours a day in the combine cabs uh, and they get very very tired um, uh, just what you know just driving up and down the field so it ho hopefully it takes a lot of a lot of fatigue off the off the operators Combines have come a long way uh, over the last sort of 50 years, uh, but combines now, you mean you've got air conditioning in the cabs, you've got radio with USB music controls and iPod input. You could sit a day in a combine very, very comfortably and be cool and relaxed and, and, and just go about your sort of daily work in a, in a, in a nice way. The yellow dome that you'll see on the roof uh, picks up uh, what we call the GLONASS satellites, which is a Russian-based satellite that sits more in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and it also picks up the American GPS satellites. The satellite picks up the position of the combine. The satellites then relay that data to uh, a tracking place that's located on the Earth. Um, a, a correction signal is then sent from, from the uh, tracking building uh, to uh, back up to the satellites and then the satellite then relays that back down to the combine and the combine is then able to, to, to correct itself and steer in a, in a straight line. There is talk of uh, driverless combines coming um, the combines can drive themselves as such with the operator just sitting there and that, that would then work on, on the losses that you set up in the combine, what your acceptable losses coming out of the cab and the combine can then adjust its speed uh, to, to help with those losses and get every bit of grain in, in the tank that, that the farmer wants to harvest. The, the combine takes a sample out of the, out of the, the grain tank um, up to sort of four to five times a minute um, and it just records the weight of the grain that it's taken into the sample uh, and, then it, and then it brings it up on the screen either, either as an instant uh, or as an average across the field um, so, you, so the farmer has a good idea of, of, of what, that where there's bad areas of the field which haven't yielded particularly well uh, or there's areas that have yielded very, very well. And what the farmer can then do is take that data and he can then analyse his fertiliser inputs and he can then change it across the field as he's driving along with the, with the fertiliser applicator. The combine has what we call remote display access. 
uh, and that helps our service department out greatly. Um, but instead of, instead of uh, one of our service technicians going out uh, onto farm, the staff in the office can, could speak to the operator uh, on the phone and actually see what the operator sees on his screen in the cab without actually physically being there. This field has been chopped um, so that the, all the straw that isn't wanted uh, by the farmer is then, is then chopped up into very small pieces and is then left on the surface to be able to, for it to be incorporated by the cultivations and the ploughs um, and also it, it brings um, fertiliser as well uh, because of the breaking down of the, of the crop residue back into the ground.